Hey, what the geeking back at it again. All right, guys, here it is the beginning of the year collection tour guys the geek kings collection you're gonna see my hot toys you're gonna see my NECA tmnt figures you're gonna see my dragon ball z shs you're gonna see my statues you're gonna see a whole bunch of great things guys so sit back grab your popcorns and enjoy the show guys so let's get it Before I start getting into each individual piece, guys, I want to give you guys a quick look at the collection compared to last time we were here and how it's vastly grown, you know? My TMNT collection has expanded immensely. My X-Men collection as well. I've taken it to a whole nother level. I put my focus on that. I put my focus on my Batman collection. I put my focus on my art as well. I got a few CGCs. And I just, you know, want to focus on the things that I loved growing up as a child rather to just hoard everything in the fucking world, you know. A lot of people don't realize that when they start collecting, including myself, you know, I wanted every single individual piece. And that's not how it works, you know. You got to be able to just control yourself and figure out what you like, what you want to focus on, and what you think works well with everything else. So panning on up guys, you can see that my Spider-Man section has had a bit of a change. I still have my Venom and Spider-Man cover, as well as the animated series Venom and Spider-Man. But joining them are my amazing Spider-Man number 362 and a Venom number 27 CGC 9.8 grade comics. Spider-Man number 362 is signed by Stan Lee and Mark Bagley. So you already know, this is a special one for me. And it marks the first appearance of Carnage, issue number two. And Venom number 27 is signed and sketched by Inyuk Lee, guys. Amazing, amazing work in his amazing, amazing cover book. and they are both 9.8. To the left, I have my Into the Spider-Verse Mafex figures. You have Peter B. Parker, Peter Parker, Miles Morales, of course, and Gwen. And of course, Porky, right there chilling. Following by my Bowen bust and my Bowen Spider-Man black suit. And I moved my Spider-Man Mafex cartoons to the wall. Added the black Spider-Man one, which wasn't here last. And there you have it, guys. This is my nice little Spider-Man section. Attached with the um, first appearance of Carnage art. So I blended them all pretty well. Came out great, in my opinion. Gearing towards the left, we have the Heralds of Galactus art print by John Kivini. There you see Galactus and Nova. Love this art print. Followed by the maquette. One fourth scale Silver Surfer exclusive that comes paired up with Nova. Amazing piece. I paired it up with, of course, the great Thanos bust sideshow with the light up gauntlet.
just an awesome, awesome piece. I love them together. And shout out to my boy, Christian. He made this Geek King 3D print for me. Love you, man. Thank you so much. So as I open this up, here we have the Mark 50. The Mark 85 Battle Damaged, one of my favorite Hot Toys. And of course, the Iron Man 2's Classic Mark 5. In the back, I have a John Romita Jr. art cover, which pairs well with them, in my opinion. I absolutely love John Romita. And down here, I have the Iron Patriot from Endgame, an absolute amazing piece. Back there, I have War Machine Punisher. It's a video game exclusive, I believe. And of course, the Iron Spider from Hot Toys. I have him with a Captain America shield and a custom display base based on a comic book art. Following down is the Black Widow from Captain America, the Winter Soldier. In my end game, Captain America, the Broken Shield and the Thor Hammer and the custom display base as well. And in the bottom guys, I have a DLX Hulkbuster. DLX Mark 48, I believe. A Mesco Iron Man Classic with the vibrant color as well. And this one has a custom head sculpt guys. And there you have it guys, display side number one in all its glory. <laughs> Transitioning to the right as my PS5 makes a cameo <laughs> is my Star Wars Darth Vader Anakin Skywalker Master Replica lightsaber guys. Let's turn it on so you guys can see it still works. <laughs> Sound is still there. The light is still there. It's just a great, great piece. And alongside my replica, guys, is of course my Star Wars display case. This time I want to start at the bottom. These are my Bandai Samurai line, guys. These are pretty, you know, old. They've been out a while, but they look amazing still. They go for, you know, a few bucks, some of them. I have, of course, Boba Fett, the classic. I believe he was the first one that came out. Then I have Mando, OG Mando there. I have Django. And in the back I have a Snow Trooper and Kylo Ren. I stopped collecting these a while back, but I might get back in the line and collect a few that I'm missing because they look absolutely great, guys. Transitioning up. We have Hot Toys. Boba Fett on Throne and Django Fett.
the details on these are just second to none. Above them, I have the Mandalorian, Beskar Mando. This is from season one, guys. I gotta get season two. I have them on pre-order, but haven't received them yet. Back there, I have Heavy Artillery Mando. And Bo-Katan, one of my newest pieces. And up we go. To the OG Mando section. This is a Mando bust. This is the Iron Studios Mando from season two. Amazing piece. I love the details on this. These Iron Studios, <laughs> they've become such favorites of mine. Thinking of getting more of these Iron Studios as far as the Star Wars line. Then, of course, the OG Mandalorian itself. One of my all time favorite pieces. And behind that, I have the first issue. The Mandalorian comic book. And last but not least, of course, like I've told you guys plenty of times so far, <laughs> I'm a big Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader fan. So in the back there, I have Darth Vader. Hot Toys. I have Commander Rex, Commander Cody, and a Soka Trooper. Again, the details on these are absolutely sensational. Love, love, love these. And there you have it, guys. That is my Star Wars display. I didn't have this here on my last tour. So, you know, it's, it's good to have a representation of my Star Wars figures. Transitioning to the right, guys, is my TMNT. NECA Turtle Collection. It's really big in the society and in the community. Respectfully so. I mean, look at this collection. Not many have pretty much most of the TMNT collection, you know? So a lot of people always ask me about this and, you know, the dedication to getting pretty much every single piece. It wasn't easy, very pricey, in my last video, I believe I didn't have the second display case. So, you know, I'm going to talk about the second display case. Starting from the bottom, guys. Do not mind the dust. I have to dust a little. I have the SH Figure Arts Turtles. All four. Mikey, Ralph, Donnie, and Leo, of course. And in the back, I have the Last Ronin hardcover with the Last Ronin figures and the exclusive 40th Anniversary PX. 
ruin it black and white above the SHs is the Batman vs. TMNT NECA line from the movie. I recommend you guys watch that movie if you haven't. It's a great, great flick. Batman vs. Shredder was freaking epic. And the turtles were, you know, the turtles. They were funny and great. Ross Al Gore was dope. You know, everybody played their part. So it was a great flick. And above the TMNT vs. Batman movie figures, I have the TMNT 2, Secret of the Ooze, NECA figures, guys. And these are displayed with the accessory packs. I got Leo with the newspaper it comes with, Mikey with the guitar, Donnie with the mop and the apron. I don't think anything is beating NECA as far as the TMNT lines, man. The detail of these figures are just on another level. Even the accessories, they look so on point, so accurate. You know, I absolutely love them. I have Super Shredder here. I have a couple of foots chilling. Talk on Razor, of course. I am missing TMNT 2 Secret of the Ooze Shredder, but you know, there's no rush. There's no rush to really get him at all, but it's a great, great display. They look absolutely sensational. And of course, what follows them are the OGs themselves, the TMNT movie figures by NECA, the first wave guys. These are fan favorites. Obviously, the details are on another level. It revolutionized the NECA culture. And they're just amazing figures, man. Got Shredder. Got the Foots. Got Ralph with his costume on. Casey Jones. April. With Casey Jones. Leo. Ralph. Master Splinter, Mikey, Zani. And I forgot the name of the kid, but <laughs> you guys get it. <laughs> amazing, amazing figures, guys. I got it paired with a TMNT custom sign. Above my movie figures, guys, I do have my TMNT Mirage line figures. Now, these, I was late to the party. I missed out on the box sets. But nonetheless, I'm not stressing that too much. You know, I'll eventually get them if they come my way. If they don't, it is what it is. I will be getting Mikey, though I'm missing him. I have Leo. I have Donnie. And I have Raph. Autographed by Kevin Eastman himself. If you guys watch my Comic-Con 22 video, you'll see me getting an autograph and meeting him. He's a hell of a guy. Absolutely one of the best creators of all time, obviously. And I also have this steel plate poster. I had him autograph that too. New blood. Great, great piece, guys. I also have the exclusives of the foot, Renette, Shredder, and an autographed Shredder card. Awesome, awesome pieces. The details on these are just sensational. Transitioning to the right, I have my TMNT Cartoon Turtle line, guys. These I have displayed with an art that I found in a convention, as well as the Channel 6 exclusive April pack. And these 
are absolutely amazing. I have them with the diorama display. Not the tune one, but close enough. I got the OG turtles here hanging out. Ralph with his pizza. Shredder fly. <laughs> I got Donnie holding a Sega Genesis <laughs> and the remote in his computer. You already know how Donnie does. Leo mad as hell, always trying to fight somebody. No, that's Ralph, but <laughs> you get the point. <laughs> Mikey chilling. Got a custom garbage bin with the rats and the rat king. Baby Shredder there. And some Mausers, of course. As we transition our way down into the display case, I started off with the OG villains, guys. I have Bebop, Rocksteady, Shredder. The droids, the Mausers. I have about a dozen foots there. With Shredder leading the way. Again, amazing pieces displayed together. You can't go wrong with these guys. Highly recommend for any turtle fan to get these. It'll be pricey, but <laughs> worth it at the end. What goes up must come down. <laughs> and these are my turtles. Of course. I have Zack, I have the OG Turtles in disguise, I have the OG Green Turtles, and these I have with a custom base. Again, the TMNT cartoon logo of the originals, obviously. I got them customized with the black background, so, you know, they can pop. And they look sensational together, guys. And behind this display, I have a TMNT sign that I believe I got off of eBay. Kind of made a little lights, camera, action scene. And I just think it works well, guys. And below the turtles, I have pretty much all the villains. Just hanging out, displayed. It's ready to rock. And below the villains, guys, I have the exclusives right here. I have Scrag, Bebop and Rocksteady in their bunny outfits. And of course, the dark turtle himself. I'll get more in depth with my turtle line in the turtle video I'll make a little bit after this video, guys. So stay tuned. But yep. Before I jump into my big boys, let's go and check out my Dragon Ball C SH section, guys. DBZ to me, man, it's just one of those things that they capture my heart, man. The SHs are just one of the greatest lines that they've ever made as far as Dragon Ball Z toys and figures. 
You know, I always remember my childhood, the second I close my eyes and think about Dragon Ball Z. So it definitely holds an advantage over everything in my collection. These are just figures that I'll never get rid of. I'll never get rid of anything in my collection, but you know, as far as trades or changes, the SHs are just gonna be something that's always gonna be a part of my collection. I absolutely love them. I absolutely love Dragon Ball Z, as you can see. And um, let's talk about what's new and what's popping. For the most part, a lot of my newer figures come into this shelf because a lot of them are pretty much exclusives, if not video game pieces. As you can see, Android 21 with a lab code exclusive. That looks dope. That's our regular figure in the back. I have limited edition trunks from the Xenoverse there. Time Patrol, Gohan, limited edition there. Coolers from the, um, you know, the movies. I have this Kong Vegito right here. He looks absolutely amazing as well. And he blends well with, you know, Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. Down here I have the Brawly moving figures, of course. Firstborn Brawly, Super Saiyan God, Vegeta. He's going for a lot of money too. Event exclusive Goku, God Mode. Back there if you can see Super Saiyan clone Goku from the Dragon Ball Z video game. That's an exclusive as well. Comic Con color exclusive Brawly right there. So, you know, I have a pretty good set of exclusives down here in the shelf. Transitioning up. What's new here is first form cell with his shell. The details on these are getting so much better. Super Saiyan 2 Goku. I believe that's it for here. That's what's new. Transitioning up, I believe up here, most of the Ginyu Force is new. They finally came out for the most part. I'm assuming that's all of them. First form Frieza. Yeah, they're all out. This Gohan is new. Namek Gohan. Namek Bulma. Also back there, you see Gohan in his scene battle uniform. Looks dope. You know, just like everything else in your collection, or you get a new piece. You just have to rearrange, see what fits. Up here, I believe everything is pretty much the same. Except for Evolution Vegeta's effects that I got here. A little custom. And this, guys, is my new baby. The PBR Goku Kaioken versus Vegeta. The original fight scene of the two legendary characters right here. I got this off a of seller on YouTube that was getting rid of his Dragon Ball Z stuff and I had to, had to pick this one up. I 
absolute grill of a piece. The detail is on point. The animation is on point. Look at the base. <laughs> it's just a great, great piece, guys. As you can see, it's number 40 out of 200. And I just absolutely love this piece, guys. I have it paired with the art still of Goku and Vegeta. The same monkey in the back. And this is the latest New York City Comic Con exclusive. I'm loving what they're doing with these exclusives, you know, bringing that extra shine. Yeah, maybe the same figure, but man, that extra shine, I'll tell you, it makes a difference. It definitely pops. That glow is, you know, spectacular, guys. The other side, of course, I got the Kyoken Goku Comic Con exclusive 2021 with Sean Shima's autograph there in the back in all its glory. Love to shine on these exclusives. They just pop so freaking well. And of course, I'll get more in detail with an updated video of my Dragon Ball Z SH line coming this year as well, guys. All right, guys, and now for the big boys. The main event of the evening is my statues and my display cases that go along with them. So let's talk about it, guys. Let's start off. Eh, let's start off with the Batman section. The thing I love about Batman and Batman collectors is that it can be so diverse, you know? Everybody's Batman collection is different, you know? Mine's ranges from my Batman Who Laughs collection to my movie cinematic Hot Toys collection and, um, you know, my Batman Hush collection as well. My Batman Black and Whites I've been collecting for a long time. And, of course, my Grail Batman Hush statue, which is my favorite piece probably out of everything here you know i pride myself in having that figure i'm most likely gonna get superman as well and you know batman is just so iconic that you can literally take any batman collection and go anywhere you desire with it you know that's what makes it so unique and such a great great character starting now here i have my kodobukiya new 52 justice league statues guys Inspired by Jim Lee. Paired up with a few comic books and books. And behind I have the Dark Knight Returns. Batman Mescos, guys. The first ever Mescos that came out. Those I don't have displayed, but they're back there hanging out. Moving inside is my Batman Black and Whites. A few concepts, of course. Great, great pieces. They're just absolutely stunning. I love these. Again, inspired by different artists. Back there's the Jim Lee one. Before I get into my hot toys, let me transition into my Batman Hush collection. Back there I have a Batman SSR 1-6 scale Batman Hush figure, as well as all my make fix.
And to the left are my Batman and my Superman Hot Toy figures from the Justice League movie. You guys probably seen these in my Hot Toys video, but here they are yet again in the flesh. Henry Cavill's likeness is just unmatched here. And as well as Ben Affleck's, they look absolutely sensational, guys. As we make our way down, I have the Batman and Superman Justice League Nightmare Scene figures paired up with the Batman Arkham Asylum video game gold sign exclusive Batman figure. Details are on another level. Opposite that is the grill itself. Batman Returns, Michael Keaton. I absolutely was in love with this Batman movie when I was a kid. I have him with a custom display base as well as a custom cape. That was pretty pricey. Great, great piece, obviously. And back there, I have the Batman Armory from the Dark Knight Rises trilogy. They appear extremely well together, as you guys can see. Transitioning left is my Batman Who Laughs collection. These are the 110 Scales DC Metal Collection. I have each individual piece. They're absolutely sensational. The details are amazing. And they're just great pieces to have. Sideshow Batman Who Laughs One Four Scale Statue. Of course, I have him paired with a Batman. Detective Comics 1027, signed by Tyler Kirkham. Great, great pieces, guys. And last but not least is my Batman One Third Hush Statue. The lighting makes it pop, man. It's absolutely a great grail. He comes with the other four head sculpts that I don't have displayed. I have them in storage, but I might take them out and display them. They look nice with them. 
And behind him, I have the Jim Lee canvas art. Paired with the Superman canvas art. Both hush pieces as well. Can't forget my Infinite Crisis number one CGC 9.6 autograph. This one has a few autographs, guys. It has Jim Lee, Geoff Johns, Phil Jimenez, and Andy Langy. One of my prestige comic books. Before I jump into my X-Men collection, guys, I cannot forget my Spawn collection, guys. These are the Spawn Kickstarter figures. I have all three. Kind of got me started into collecting again a few years ago. And, you know, I haven't looked back ever since, guys. This is the autograph Todd McFarlane Kickstarter series. They are absolute grails. I love them. The detail is on point. I have them paired with the CGC 9.8 Spawn issue number one. I found a few years back as well in a comic book shop. I couldn't believe I found it, you know, and I got it sent to CGC and got it graded. So that was awesome. And of course, the brand new Spawn and Batman comic book, guys. This is the Fabak Artist Edition, guys. So this is my small little Spawn set. This, guys, is my X-Men collection. As collectors, we tend to want to get everything, like I've mentioned before. But, you know, in reality, you want one main focus. You want something that's going to speak out to everyone. You want something that says something about yourself or something from your childhood that made the most impact to you as a collector. So, to me, that's my X-Men collection, guys. I've... um enjoyed collecting this one tenth scale i enjoy collecting the mafex pieces i've enjoyed collecting a bus everything about x-men is just you know it's my childhood it's what got me started with wanting to collect so i decided to put my main focus on pretty much x-men and batman and this guys is my absolute x-men collection as it grows it's gonna get better it's gonna get bigger but this is it for now. Compared to last year, it has grown exponentially, but we still have a lot of missing pieces and I'm looking forward to continuing collecting the X-Men 110 scale line from Iron Studios and just continuing that journey, guys. The Age of Apocalypse one is about to come out and you know, the Phoenix pieces coming out soon. Just a whole bunch of amazing looking pieces that just takes it to another level. And I am absolutely enjoying the Iron Studios 110 scale X-Men diorama, guys. Here in the bottom are my X-Men omnibus and hardcover comic book, guys. At one point, I had every single X-Men story collected, you know? I still have a lot in storage, but these are the main ones, my main focuses, and my favorite stories of X-Men that I want displayed with my X-Men collection. Transitioning up, I have my X-23 Bowen statue, a classic old school one right here. Paired up with an X-23 steel plate art. This Bowen piece is number 326 out of 500, sculpted by Tim Miller. It's an absolute beauty, guys. And my roaring Mesco in the back. I have to show my Mesco some love, man. All my Mescos I have in the box, I gotta get them out and display them somehow. They are amazing, amazing figures. Above my X-23, I have my Sabretooth bust. I have my Deadpool bust, and they are paired with my Mafexes, Psylocke 141, and Wolverine Classic, number 138. Transitioning our way up, I have the X-Men animated series Wolverine Bust. Great piece. Paired up with the X-Men Wolverine Mafex number 96. These are great pieces, guys. Apologies that I don't have them open, but 
I'm trying to leave them sealed because <laughs> they are just for display purposes. You know, I don't play with my toys. <laughs> as ironic as that is, you know, my figures are to just enjoy and love. Moving on left is my Gambit display. It's pretty much the same as the Wolverine, one of my favorite characters, Gambit. I have the X-Men animated series bust here. Great, great piece, like all of them. Paired up with the Gambit 131 Mafex cartoon comic book line. One of the best Mafexes figures that they've ever made, man. He's just, I wish you guys can see this out of the box. They're just amazing pieces. And down below, like I said, guys, pretty much same concept I have the Jean Grey animated series bust and the Magneto animated series bust paired up back there with their Mayfex figures Jean Grey 160 and Magneto 128 following suit below is my Hot Toys Deadpool 2 movie masterpiece figure with a custom base and a cartoony Deadpool mini bust I'm assuming <laughs> one Miller Merc I saw this in a comic shop and I had to pick it up it was absolutely cute great little figure well it's a statue so Great little statue, and it just goes well with my little Deadpool section. I gotta add some art in the back, but you know, with growth, with growth. <laughs> to the left of Deadpool is my Bowen Classic X-Men. These Bowen figures are very pricey, guys. I've had them for a very long time. They were the first statues I started collecting, so I pride myself that I still own them. They've passed the test of time, and they just, you know, they fare well with anything modern today. One of my favorite characters of all time, and my favorite X-Men, believe it or not, guys, is Cyclops. So this is my Cyclops Bowen piece. Again, an amazing, amazing piece. Goes well with anything modern today. He has the new X-Men suit on, the great look. I have him paired with the Uncanny X-Men Second Coming variant where Nightcrawler dies. And yo, he is just an amazing piece. I love this piece. I love this statue. Very underrated piece, expensive piece now as well. And again, don't sleep on these Bowens, guys. They go well with anything modern today. Above him is my Cyclops animated series bust. And again, not to be redundant, but redundantly, is my Cyclops Mafex piece, number 99. And there you have it, guys. That is the inside in-depth look of my display cases of my X-Men collection. And to top it off is my X-Men Iron Studios diorama, guys. Along with some art and some CGCs. I absolutely love this collection it took me a while to decide if I wanted to get into these dioramas but you know what I'm an X-Men fan at the end of the day I needed them in my collection and once I started getting them I was just like so impressed and so into them I just decided to make it my main focus you know I did miss out on Sentinel number one but it's so good my brother has it so I can just enjoy that piece whenever I go over his house. 
But yeah, man, I made my diorama into my own. I absolutely love it. I'm gonna continue to get pieces. I'm far from done. But for now, these are my main individual pieces, guys, and I absolutely love them. So far, I have Sauron, which is an amazing piece, guys. I would not recommend you guys to miss out on this piece if you are into this diorama. Below him, I have Forge, another great piece. Classic X-Force. I have Iceman in the back there. Paired up with Sentinel-3. Amazing piece, guys. I added one of the special effects of Nightcrawler on top of him just to make it pop a little bit more. Even though he doesn't really need it, man. These pieces are just magnificent. I have Storm back there. Looking beautiful as always. Nightcrawler, another amazing piece. A Christmas present for my girlfriend, Bishop, which is another amazing piece. Very vibrant. Very well detailed. The second diorama itself, which brings Gambit. The Sentinel. Magneto. And Juggernaut. To the right, I have Angel, Psylocke, the White Queen, looking absolutely stunning. Quicksilver. Scarlet Witch. Sabretooth. Wolverine. And my last piece, my most recent piece, Apocalypse. On the center of the diorama, I have an Alex Ross X-Men piece. This is number 274 out of 300. Great, great piece. Alex Ross is, of course, a legend. So happy to have this piece in my collection. I have a 9.6 X-Men number one Jin Lee cover. And above that, I have an Uncanny X-Men number 300, 9.8 CGC graded comic book. Now these two X-Men comics are my favorite covers of all time. That's why I got them CGC'd. And they just look absolutely stunning with, you know, the X-Men display guys. And to top of the art, I have a promo schism piece by Adam Kerbert. This is an original piece, guys. One of one. And 
there you have it guys that is my diorama pieces in a nutshell like i said there will be more added to the collection as time passes this is just my yearly review and you know let's see what changes come in this new year guys but for now this is my collection